grade tens and welcome to this lesson on revising geometry of lines and triangles. Now you've been doing geometry for quite a while. You've actually been drawing pictures of triangles and squares and rectangles and lines and all sorts of things since you could draw. A, tr a triangle was probably one of the first shapes that you learned to recognize with those three sides. Now the reason we need to learn all of these things is that some of you are going to go into some sort of career where you need to draw things or you need to analyze drawings of things. Things like um, engineering and architecture or even design. There's so many places that geometry is useful. However, when we're in school, it looks a little pointless, doesn't it? You've spent the last two years constructing angles and lines just using a compass and a ruler. And that might have felt a bit pointless, seeing as we have a protractor. Protractor is that half circle thing that's used to measure the angles. But by constructing all of those lines, your brain is forming new connections and helping you to understand the more complicated, not complicated, more abstract type of thinking that's needed for solving geometry problems. And now that you're in grade 10, we need to start going into those more abstract things. Now, we're only going to learn one new thing this whole year in geometry. So you don't need to worry about the section at all. If you've done fine in previous years, you'll do fine today. You really will. And today we're not going to do anything new. We're just going to look through things that you've already done, maybe make a few notes, brush up on that knowledge, and apply it to some questions that you would have seen already in grade 9. Okay, shall we begin? We're going to first begin by going through some of the terminology that you know from previous years. Now remember that you need to know this terminology so that you can describe how to solve the problems. A lot of solving geometry problems is not thinking about the problem like in algebra. You have to see okay, we're going to factorize or solve for x or maybe we need to take out a common factor or something. There are a whole lot of different ways. With geometry, you've got to look at the whole setup of the shape and look for the relationships. So you need to know the relationships and you need to know how to describe them. Okay, let's look at the first term. And the first term that we're going to go over today is complementary angles. Now these are angles that add up to 90 degrees and of course you know that's a right angle so I'm just going to draw a line over here and there is a symbol for 90 degrees so any angles that are formed within that space let's say this was 40 degrees what would this one be well because we know they are complementary we can calculate that it's 50 degrees now, grade 10s, complementary angles is something that we don't actually use very often in our descriptions and things like that. Supplementary angles are more important to remember. Well, at least the term supplementary. Can you remember what supplementary means? Let's take a look at it and I'll draw a picture of what a supplementary angle will look like. And this time I'm going to use a line and let's draw a line over there and then let's draw a line up there. Now, what do we know about angles around a straight line? How many degrees are they equal to? If you said 180 degrees, you would be absolutely correct. So, if this side is 180 degrees, what does it mean about the length or the magnitude of this side? This side is also 180 degrees and we know this because angles around a point and let's do this in another color angles around a point and our point is this one add up to 360 degrees so by having a straight line through that that functions as the diameter and we've got a radius coming out over here and that means that the diameter cuts it directly in half and let's say that this is 130 degrees what will this side be how would we calculate it 
Well, we would say 180 degrees minus 130 degrees is equals to 50 degrees. Now we have to explain why we're doing that calculation and we would explain it in brackets next to it saying that the reason we're doing this is because they are supplementary adjacent angles. What does adjacent mean? Okay, well adjacent, here's me, I'm sitting on the train and then someone comes and sits next to me. Here's this someone. This someone is now sitting adjacent to me. Adjacent. You don't need to know how to spell it because we abbreviate everything. So adjacent means next to. So when we find out that one angle is minus 180 degrees of the other angle, we'd say the reason is supplementary adjacent angles. Now, this is probably one of the ones that you're going to use the most often, supplementary adjacent angles. So you should be making a note somewhere with a diagram of the straight line and an angle through it, and then writing down that supplementary adjacent angles is the reason for this. Why do we need to know reasons? Well, with geometry, there are many different ways to solve problems. And anyone who tells you that there's only one way to ever solve any kind of geometry problem is obviously not thinking enough because there really are so many different ways you can go about it. So because of that, we need to explain ourselves quite carefully in our solutions. And if we say that this angle's worth 50 degrees, we need to state that it's worth 50 degrees because it's supplementary adjacent to the other angle, which is 130 degrees. So reasons are important. Okay, supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. They don't necessarily need to be next to each other to add up to 180 degrees, but the most common case is when there are two angles that are next to each other uh, on a straight line, and then we say they are supplementary adjacent angles. Okay, the next term we're going to go through is vertically opposite angles. Now let's draw some lines. Now once again, all of these should be things that you've already uh, done in previous years. Now what does it mean to be opposite? Here I am again. Now I've got a purple friend over here and I've got a blue friend over here and let's make a red friend, well, maroon friend over here. Now, who is opposite to me? Who is opposite? What does opposite mean? Opposite means that if I'm looking across the room, who am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at my blue friend. So we are vertically opposite from each other. Now, what do we know about vertically opposite angles? We know that this side is equals to that side. Why are they equal? Well, grade 10, so I'm going to ask you to do something a little funny for this. I need you to hold up your two of your fingers, two longest fingers, whichever ones they are, and now you're going to make an X with them. Now, look, the vertically opposite angles are over there. If we move them like that, is one getting smaller or are both getting smaller? If we move like this, what's happening? All of the angles are changing in relation to each other. How many degrees are around a point? 360. So let's look, uh, scroll down a little bit and see if I can do fancy things with these lines. I'll draw a line there and I'll draw a line here and I'll select it and then look. So we are going to focus on me standing over here and my friend standing over there and now let's move. Who has more space? 
Is it my friend or me? Keep moving it. What do you notice about these two angles? Are they still the same? Is that the same size as that? It should be. And if I had a project protractor, I would show you, demonstrate it. But don't worry, just now I'm going to show you an awesome little tool that we've developed for this show to demonstrate it properly. Okay, now, if we're talking about vertically opposite angles, which only require two lines, then we need to talk about the next thing, which are transversals and parallel lines. There's often a common problem over here. People think that any transversal going through any two lines will form uh, the same relationships. And that is not true. We specifically look at parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. So let's go back to our notes. Parallel lines and transversals. Now, I am going to draw a line and a line that is not parallel. If I continue this line that is not parallel, what we'll find is that eventually these lines will cut each other. And that means they are not parallel because parallel lines never, ever, ever cut each other. In fact, if we did have a parallel line, and let's put it in now, that looks roughly parallel to me, and then this would be called the transversal. Why is this one called the transversal? because it's the line that cuts the other two lines. Transversal. There, I even spelt it right. So this line is parallel to this line. And here is our transversal. And I'm going to just do it in a different color. Um, let's make it you know, that purple. And there we go. I don't know if it really makes much of a difference, but it makes me feel better. Now, as a result of this transversal cutting two parallel lines, there are certain shapes that are formed. We have a Z shape, sometimes known as an N shape. We also have the C shape, also sometimes called the U. And lastly, we have the F shape. Let's do the F in purple, coming down like this. Now, why is it important to know all of these? Well, you would have discovered with your, um, oh, with your constructions that if this was equals to 20 degrees, well, then this is equals to 20 degrees because of vertically opposite angles. And there's your reason. But now, because this line is parallel to this line, it means that this angle over here is going to be supplementary to the 20 degrees. And what does supplementary mean? It adds up to 180. And those are called co-interior angles. Okay. And then, this angle is equals to 160 because it is a vertically opposite angle. Okay. Whoopsie, lost the top of the angle. But then, if we know those lengths, then we know that this one over here is going to be 20 degrees because it is an adjacent supplementary angle. But now this is getting very messy, isn't it? So let's examine the 20s. Here's a 20, and we'll color it in pink. And here's a 20. Now, if we look at the shape that's formed, as I've colored in those two, we see this kind of shape. Now, when I was younger, I always used to get confused because I was like, yes, there's a Z, but where do the angles actually fall? Now, when we have alternate angles, they are equal, but they are only ever equal if those two lines are parallel. And when we have co-interior angles, 
there, and there. In other words, they have a U-like shape or a Z. They add up to 180 degrees. In other words, they are supplementary. And the last one is a corresponding angle. And now it is looking extremely gorgeous. There's some blue and there's some blue which gives us an F shape that looks like that. And there we go. And there we go. And they are only equal to each other because those two lines are parallel. Now, in grade 10s, when we come back after you've had a little bit of a leg stretch, we're going to look at a, a far better looking diagram than the one I've drawn at the moment. And I'm going to demonstrate how changing the lines can change the angles in relation to each other. Have a bit of a stretch and we'll see you just now. Okay, grade 10s, you're feeling refreshed. I hope that you had a moment to take a deep breath, maybe get a drink of water, and now you're sitting and ready to learn again. Okay, so maybe it's a good idea to get out a couple of rulers with your friends and try and make the same shapes that I'm making so that you can see how the angles change. Now, before the break, I said that I was going to show you a much nicer diagram than what I've drawn. I've made this diagram using a really great tool called GeoGebra. And this tool helps you to plot graphs. You can also draw diagrams of your geometry things. It's really, really fantastic. And best of all, it's online. So as long as you've got data, which I know data can be tight, but as long as you've got data, you can go and play with it. Okay, and you can use your phone, you can use your tablet, you can use if you have a tablet, uh, you could use your friend's computer, whatever. Okay, now let's go to my diagram. And you'll see on the diagram that I have put in the angles of measurement. So I've got an angle of 200, uh, sorry, 122.42 degrees. Let's try and get it to something nice. You'll see that as I move the one line, the other line moves as well. Why does that happen? Because these lines are parallel to each other. Let's try and get it to 100. Okay, I think that's as close as I'm going to get to 100. Okay, so 100 degrees between those points. Now, I'm grabbing onto the transversal. Look what's happening to those angles as I grab onto the transversal. Can you see the vertically opposite angles? How they're opposite to each other, but they're still exactly the same size. Right now, they're 133 degrees. So let's move it so that they are acute, like 46 degrees, 45.92. Um, and they're still vertically opposite and equal to each other. Now, can you see the corresponding angles forming the F shape? What's happening as I drag this down? And if we remember, and I'm just going to go back to where I can draw, the corresponding angle, and let's extend the page a bit. There we go. Page extended. Corresponding angle usually looks something like that, where that and that are the angles that we're looking at, and those lines have to be parallel. So let's go back to our GeoGebra drawing, and I'm going to just play with this to make it look more like what we have. Can you see the corresponding angles? At this point, whoa, something went why there. At this point, the corresponding angles are 125.7 degrees and 125.7 degrees. Now, do you think that if these lines weren't parallel, they would still have that same relationship? The answer is no. Can you spot the Z shapes? The Z shapes are also have a special relationship. In this case, it is 121.99 degrees and 129.99 degrees. Ah, 121.99 degrees. Okay, but enough of playing. I would like to give you 
two minutes to try and draw an example of each one of these triangles. So you have a scalene triangle, an isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, acute triangle, obtuse triangle, and a right angle triangle. All I want you to do is draw an example of each one. If you struggle with remembering what they are, then turn to your friend. You've got two minutes starting now. So how do you think you did? Shall we take a look at the definitions and see if your idea of these triangles lines up with what the definition actually is? Now I find it easier to draw pictures of them because it, it feels a bit wrong remembering a definition based on words. You need to be able to see it, to understand it, to draw it, to use it. So we'll show you the words but then we'll draw next to them as well. So I have a note here on the types of triangles when each angle and size are different in size when each angle and side are different in size the triangle is classified as scalene. What a strange name. So I'm going to just draw a random scalene triangle now. Each angle and each side, oh no now that looks too much like an isosceles triangle. There we go. So it's all different sizes. Do we know what they are? Nope. But we know that this one has a different size to this one which has a different size to this one. And this length is a different length to this length which is a different length to this one. Okay so let's go on to the next one. When a triangle has two sides that are equal, the two base angles will also be equal. These triangles are cl classified as isosceles. Once again, an interesting choice of name, but we're going to try and draw a rough isosceles triangle. And what's important is that our two lines are equal in length. And I'm doing this now just by Sight, so oh Helen, I moved the line when I was meant to draw a line. There we go. That looks more like an equilateral triangle. So let's fiddle with it a little bit more. We're going to take this to over here. Why? Because I want to extend that. Oh, that's close enough. Now an isosceles triangle 
is two lines that are equal to each other and the base angles that have the same value. But then it's got one that doesn't. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Equilateral triangles have three sides that are equal in length and each angle is equals to 60 degrees. Now, this is something we actually often forget. The angles of a triangle are supplementary. What does supplementary mean again? They add up to 180 degrees. And that means that if each side has the same or each angle has the same value, it's going to be A plus A plus A is equals to 180 degrees. What's my reason? Angles in a triangle are supplementary. Okay, so that means, do a bit of algebra, I've got three A's is equals to 180 degrees and that means A is equals to 60 degrees. Maybe we do a therefore. And of course these three sides are equal to each other. Okay, grade tens. Before we go on to the next term, I want to take this moment to discuss reasons again. Now the most important thing about reasons is that you are getting your idea across. It needs to be less than a sentence long, but it does need to include certain terminology. But you don't necessarily have to phrase things in exactly the same way. There are some that people are going to be a little picky about, like supplementary adjacent angles. We like it to be written just like that. But angles in a triangle are supplementary. It could be written as supplementary angles in a triangle, or angles in a triangle have a sum of 180 degrees. Uh, it really depends on your teacher how strictly they're going to mark the reasons. So after this lesson, you should ask your teacher what their preferred reasons are, and then just make sure that, that you stick with them. And it's not hard to remember things. You can remember phone numbers and your name and what you wore last weekend or <laughs> what your friend wore last weekend and that they're wearing it again this weekend. So that means you can remember these reasons. You've got the ability just because it's not something you usually think about doesn't mean you don't have the ability. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Now, I want to actually draw a line over here. Because these top three really belong together. Scalene, isosceles and equilateral. They're describing the size of the angles versus the size of the sides. But then when we have acute angle triangles, well, any one of these could be acute angle. Oh, this is not acute. Why is this? Oh, I have the line on again. This is not acute. It is obtuse. Uh, but this one is an acute angle triangle. And... This one is definitely an acute angle triangle. So acute angle triangles are triangles where all of the angles are less than, oh, let's do that, less than 90 degrees. Okay, so they are all acute angles. Obtuse angle triangles have one angle that is more than 90 degrees. So let's draw that one in first more than 90 degrees, and then we'll draw the bottom. Okay. And a right angle triangle has one interior angle which is exactly equal to 90 degrees. And of course we know we can then use Pythagoras. And it's really important that you know that you can use Pythagoras in everything. And yes, we have to use it as a reason as well, saying Pythag. And just to revise, let's name this A B and C, we say that A squared plus B squared is equals to C squared and that's how you calculate the length of one of the sides. Going on to the next slide, we're going to talk about similarity. Okay, so 
I have two girls in one of my classes. They, they are identical twins. They'll tell you they're not identical, and they're not. They've got different personalities and things like that. But they are classified as identical twins. Now, they are very similar to each other. They have exactly the same appearance, except for a scar that one of them has over here. So it can be quite difficult when you're trying to tell them apart, especially if they're wearing the same school uniform or have the same hairstyle or whatever. But they are not exactly the same. They are similar to each other. Congruent means that it would be exactly the same. In other words, we had someone and we duplicated that person exactly so that they would have exactly the same reactions to things. They would have exactly the same flecks in their eyes or a pimple on their back or whatever. They would be exactly the same in every single way. So when we're talking about similar shapes in 2D shapes, not just similar triangles, but similar shapes, we're talking about shapes that have the same number of sides and have the same size of angles, but don't necessarily have the same length in sides. So it's almost like we have a small triangle and we have a big triangle. The sides of the angles are all the same, but the big triangle, it's like you've zoomed in on it and it's become big in front of you. Then you zoom out and it's become small. It's the same triangle, but it's different sizes. So it's similar. And we indicate similarity with those three lines going down next to each other. So let's take a look at this note very quickly and then it's time for you to have a break. Geometric figures are similar if they have the same shape but have different size. There are three conditions for showing that two triangles are similar. Now we stick mostly to triangles, but you can apply this to most other things. Okay, the three corresponding sides are in proportion. Okay, so that means uh, if this was two, then this would be four. If this was one, then this would be two. How am I increasing it? Well, I'm multiplying by 2 and multiplying by 2. I'm going to take this out for now because it's a little confusing. And this as well, and this as well. Because that really links to cor uh, congruent things. OK, so two, the second case, two corresponding sides are in proportion and the included angle is equal. And lastly, three corresponding angles of the first triangle are equal to the three corresponding angles of the second triangle. Okay, grade tens, when we come back, we're going to talk about how lazy mathematicians are and why we uh, put three points down here rather than trying to explain everything all at once. So try and remember what congruency means. And then when you come back, We'll talk about similarity and congruency further. Have a good break. Uh, welcome back, grade tens. Now, uh, before you went, I said I was going to tell you about how lazy mathematicians are. See, the thing is, uh, in past times, or right in the beginning, if you wanted to prove that two triangles were similar, you would need to prove that all of the criteria are fulfilled. In other words, you would need to find the size of each of the angles and you would need to find the size of each of the lines and then prove that they are increasing in the same proportion. And that is a lot of work. So mathematicians found shortcuts to doing things. For example, if they proved that all three angles were the same size, then obviously the two triangles would be in proportion to each other. Or if they proved that all three sides had been increased or decreased in the same proportion, then the two triangles would be similar to each other. So mathematicians find sneaky ways to get around things rather than wasting time with finding the size of all of the angles and the size of all of the lines and then comparing them, they find fast ways to do it. And that's definitely the case when we talk about congruency. 
and finding out if triangles are equal to each other. So if you want to be, wanted to be fastidious about proving that two triangles were exactly the same in every way, you would prove that the one side had the same length as the other side and then the other side, and the other side, and the other side, and the other side. And then you would prove the three angles were the same as well. Now that's six different things to prove, and a lot of work, and a lot of time. So mathematicians found shortcuts. They found that there are three things. If you can prove three things are equal to each other, then generally you can prove that they are congruent. For example, if you prove that the three sides are equal to each other, then the sides of the angles have to be the same because that's the only way the triangles could be drawn. Or that two sides and an included angle are equal to each other, then the triangles have to be exactly equal to each other. Let's look at the note and I'm hoping that you're making notes as we're doing this. Geometric figures are congruent if they have the same shape and the same size. This means that all the corresponding sides and corresponding angles are equal to each other. There are four conditions for showing that two triangles are congruent. Now, what I'm saying, uh, let's just do this is that if I wanted to prove that this triangle was, was congruent to this one over here uh, before we had these four cases, I would have to prove that this is the same size as this, and this is the same size as this, and this one, this one, and then that, and that, and that, and that. Can you see? Just by talking about it, I feel tired. So it's a good thing we don't have to do that. So the four conditions in English mean the four shortcuts. That's all it is. The lazy way of doing it. And in maths, we encourage laziness because laziness or being more effective with the time we have is how we get so many things done. So three corresponding sides are equal. That uh, shouldn't be there. Three corresponding sides are equal. So that means this side would be equal to this side. Oh, how's that? And this side would be equal to this side. And this side would be equal to this side. And what is the reason you give? Side, side, side. Now another one to use is two corresponding sides and the included angle. So, in other words, this side and this side and this angle. If we knew that those were the same on these two triangles, then we would have a side angle side as the shortcut way. Then we have two angles and one side are equal. So, let's say it was this angle and this angle. In other words, this angle and this angle, and any one side, so let's make it that side, are equal. Then we say it's side, angle, angle. Do you see that the S represents side and then AA means angle, angle. And lastly, my favorite one, in a right angle triangle, because we already know it has a right angle and you have to use Pythagoras, you just need to know that it has a right angle and the hypotenuse is the same, there we go, and it has another side that's the same. And then automatically this side would be the same as this one over here. Okay, so grade 10s, don't think of them as the four conditions of congruency because then you start thinking, oh my word, it's such a terrible thing to remember. It's not a terrible thing to remember. Think of it as the four shortcuts. We don't want to prove that every single angle is equals to every single other angle and every single line is equals to every single other line. It's just far too much work. So we would rather take the shortcuts and use one of the four conditions. Now when solving any kind of geometry problem, you first need to plan your attack. So it's kind of like you're planning how you're going to ask your mom if you can use um, 
her hair straightener or something uh, or ask if you can borrow the phone or something you know something that they wouldn't usually let you do but now you need to maybe give them a back massage first and then make them a cup of tea and then ask them that's kind of what geometry is you've got to give the problem a back massage make a cup of tea and then go in for the kill okay let's take a look the first question says find the relationship if any between these triangles now already I can see that they are not congruent remember that congruent means that they are exactly the same in every single way but they have different size lengths if I look at this though what do I notice about these they seem to be decreasing in the same ratio don't they 12 divided by 4 gives me 3 so it has been decreased by a factor of 3 and what about 15 15 divided by 5 gives me 3 it has also been decreased by a factor of 3 and it will be no surprise to you that 9 divided by 3 is equals to 3 so because they have a common factor or um, they have been increased in proportion decreased in proportion they are similar in oh let me go down here a bit in proportion therefore and I'm just going to name it triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2 okay now obviously this question would be a lot easier if we had actually named the sides and then we could say side AB has a length of 12 and side DE has a length of 4 um, and it's been decreased in a factor of 3 then it would be just easier to label things but we didn't have that so we just worked with triangle 1 and triangle 2 let's go on to the next question it says find the relationship if any between these triangles okay so we have two triangles we have I L and K and we have I J and K what do you notice about them well they both have right angles so they could possibly be congruent using the R H S shortcut so we've got a right angle do we have a hypotenuse that's the same well look the hypotenuse is what we call common what does it mean to be common well it means it's being shared by the two triangles so that means it automatically has the same length then lastly we've been told that IL and JK have exactly the same length so that means we've got a hypotenuse and we've got a side so we can use this shortcut or this case of congruency to prove that these two triangles are congruent in grade tens you'll notice that I haven't done any calculations yet I first established how I'm going to prove that these two triangles are congruent and now that I've established how to prove it I've given it a bit of a massage made it a cup of tea now I'm going to hit it with my arguments and there's a very specific way to structure your arguments okay the first thing we need to do is to state what triangles we're working with so we're working with triangles I L K and triangles I J K how many different things do we need to prove we need to prove three different things so we're going to make three points one two three let's scroll down a little my first point is going to be J or angle J is equals to angle L which is equals to 90 degrees and how do I know this 
because I can't just state things. I need to show that I found it somewhere. And given is the reason I give, because it was given to me. Okay, so the next thing I need to prove is a hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is common, so I'm just going to write here I k is equals to I k. Feels a bit silly, doesn't it? But it is what it is, and my reason is that it is common. That's why it's equals to each other. And lastly, I need to prove that two sides are equal to each other. So that's I L and J K. I L is equals to J K and Y because it was given. I was told they were equal to each other. So now that I've done all of that, I need to state the obvious. I need to say, therefore, triangle, let's get this right, I L K, I L K is congruent. Do you see how there are three lines in an equal sign form to show congruency? Is congruent. Now I went from the I along the shortest line to the L. So that means on this side I need to go from the K to the J because it must be in the same order. If that angle is equals to that angle then I need to have I first and K first in the way I label the triangle. So triangle K J because J was the right angle and I. And what's my reason? R H S. Okay, so you must prove congruency using this method. Now let's see the next question. Find the relationships, if any, between these triangles. Ah, once again, a right angle. And then I've got a shared side. So this is common. But the shortcut says right angle, hypotenuse, and side. I don't know the value of this hypotenuse. Can I calculate it? Yes, of course I can. I can say RH is equals to 3 squared, or well, the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Oh, I lost myself a bit there. Which means that RH is equals to 5. Well, that's very nice because now it means that I've got two equal sides. So I've got my right angle and my hypotenuse and my side, and let's write this down quickly. So we say in triangle RST and triangle RH, whoopsie, RHT, number one, T, angle T is equals to angle T is equals to 90 degrees, uh, and it was given we were told. Okay, and number two. So we've got our right angle. Now our hypotenuse. We need to show our calculations for the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say 3 squared plus 4 squared and equals to 5. My reason is Pythag and let's say therefore RH is equals to and it was RS. And then lastly, we just need to show 3 that um, RT is equals to RT because they are common. And therefore, the two triangles. Okay, therefore, triangle blah 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 is not similar, it is congruent. To triangle blah blah blah. Why are they congruent? Because of RHS. Okay, and the reason I've left those out is because we've actually run out of time. So let's just write it. Um, and I'm sure you are wanting to get on to your next subject. So grade 10s, it's been great. Practice these proofs. Uh, they do become really useful, especially in the next few sections of geometry. I will see you again next week where we'll be doing the midpoint theorem. Okay, goodbye.